There is a lot going on in this video. It's between a face-off of the FNP-90 and the HKMB-7, as well as a test of the Soviet 6B-3 and 6B-5 body armor. Ordinarily, I'd be splitting the video up to focus on just one of these complex topics, but seeing as I ship off for army basic training in under a week, there just isn't time. Fortunately, these two submachine guns tie in very nicely to the Soviet armor I need to test. The main goals of this round of testing are to first determine how effective each of these personal defense weapons are against Soviet armor, and secondly to examine how effective the Soviet's body armor actually was at the time. This project is a huge collaboration with several friends. After discussing this whole idea with Henry at Nine Hole Reviews, I was able to find both of the best armor piercing loads for the weapons. APSX 46 ammo for the MP7 thanks to my friend who will only be named as Kuro, as well as SS190 armor piercing ammo for the P90 thanks to Buffman Range on YouTube. An MP7 itself proved extremely difficult to locate, but Battlefield Vegas stepped up and permitted me to use their weapon and venue, at Fab Famiglietti. Although the P90 came out 10 years prior to the MP7, both of these weapons were required to defeat the so-called Chrysat target at 200 meters. The Chrysat target is described as a 1.6 titanium plate backed with 20 layers of Kevlar. This target is deliberately identical to the Soviet 6B3 titanium and Kevlar backed body armor. I've heard many people speak to the fact that the P90 and the 5.7 round were designed to penetrate the armor of Soviet paratroopers that would be dropping in and attacking rearline NATO personnel. But there are several problems with this idea. Firstly, if Soviet paratroopers are dropping in on you, one, you are all going to die. And two, those paratroopers will not only kill every one of you, but your P90 won't penetrate their armor anyway, because by 1990, the VDV was equipped with either thicker 6.5mm titanium plate or boron carbide ceramic armor. At least, those are the untested thoughts that have been floating around in my gear historian's brain whenever I hear forgotten weapons invoke the VDV. Just don't misunderstand me and blame Ian for what he's saying about the idea behind these weapons, because Ian's smart. He didn't come up with the idea. Someone with a lot less foresight did. Plus, rifle-weighted armor wasn't common in the West during the P90's development. Either someone at FN didn't do proper research on Soviet infantry, or maybe nobody had a clue as to their recent developments. Hindsight is 2020 here. The SS-190 bullet consists of a hardened steel penetrator backed by an aluminum core, entirely wrapped in copper jacket. When fired from the pistol, only the tip of the round, that is, the steel part, penetrated the sphera, with the rest being wedged in the titanium plate. The round failed entirely against many metal and Kevlar composite helmets, and this already betrays that the round isn't going to do well against anything thicker than the Chrysat target. This also explains why the white paper about the weapon system emphasizes that the round is intended against soft armor. So what about the MP7 and the 4.6 round? Well, the 4.6 APSX round is almost entirely hardened steel wrapped in a very thin copper jacket. There are virtually no tests of this round on YouTube, so let's give it a go against the thin 6B3 1.5mm titanium armor. This armor is basically Soviet dragon scale. The plates sit in aramid wrapped pockets designed to stop shrapnel from bullet splash caused by impacts against the plates. They're also backed by 30 to 40 layers of aramid. We'll be taking most of our shots from about 10 feet away. So, in easy penetration, and while not particularly interesting footage, don't worry, as that'll come later. What was interesting was that after the round penetrated the armor and the first blocks of NIJ clay, it started tumbling, and that would obviously cause some tremendous internal damage. In order to better determine the margins of penetration, we had the bright idea to stack three 1.5mm plates in a pocket in order to reach 4.5mm of titanium thickness. This is about a third more thick than my Alton helmet's protection. Again, not particularly sparky footage, but 4.6 easily penetrated three plates, leaving an around 25mm hole through the clay. Let's move on to the proper 6.5mm issued plates I was talking about. These plates started being issued out in 1985, so around 15 years before the MB7's inception. Oh. 
This shot sent sparks directly at me, and I wish I had somehow been able to record my point of view because it totally vindicated wearing my helmet. But look at the results. No penetration. The bullet tried so hard, and according to our liaison JD, it pressed itself against the plate in a similar fashion to the old school K bullets. The 4-6 round has been stopped with no energy transferring through the vest and no apparent splash directed at the user. We're going to hit it again with 4-6, but first let's see how the P90's SS190 would fare. Did I miss? I'm sorry to say it waffle enthusiasts, but the round hasn't even made so much as a dent on the plate. To prove it wasn't a fluke, we tried again. And we got the same result. This is purely down to bullet construction over everything. The 4.6 APSX is almost entirely made of hardened steel, and thus is a much better armor penetrator than 5.7. But that better penetration doesn't help either PDW in this case. I managed to score a 4.6 round in nearly the exact same location as the previous hit, and it still wasn't able to penetrate. In fact, I'm pretty sure that if you only hit Ivan's armor, you couldn't kill him with an entire mag from either weapon. However, let's see what the best could do against a conventional M16 from the time, loaded with green tip SS-109. According to sketchy Soviet data that involved the vests being tested on animals, the 6.5mm titanium plate can only stop a green tip round from an M16 100% of the time when it's 100 meters away. The data seems to be consistent with this penetration, but the titanium armor was already being made obsolete by the 6B5's boron carbide ceramic tiles. According to Soviet data, these tiles can stop the same green tip from 10 meters 100% of the time. So let's try from 12 feet instead. The plate has managed to capture the round entirely out of a 20 inch barrel with no serious backspace deformation. I do not need to emphasize how impressive that is for the late 80s, and how really doomed each of these PDW's armor piercing goals really were. But I've got one more card to play, I brought some M855A1, the army's current rifle round, that while not armor piercing, hits and penetrates significantly better than green tip. No dice. The 6v5 armor is pretty good for being half a decade older than I am. It is a pretty uncomfortable thought to think that millions of communist conscripts would have streamed across the Iron Curtain with sets of this mass-produced armor. As far as what PDW is superior overall, I think that they're both equally worthless at penetrating Soviet armor, but I like the AR rifle style ergonomics of the MP7 much better than the P90's bullpup weirdness. That's all for now. I'm going to try to get out one more video before I ship, but in case I'm not able to finish it on time, I'll see you all in about 9 weeks. Try not to miss me too much.